Welcome to another episode of In the Classroom. We are joined today with Alexis of the Ascension Diaries. And we're excited to talk about, you know, it's on a lot of people's radar, but so many of us actually don't know what it is. And that is the Schumann Resonance. And Alexis, I I send a lot of people your way (laughs) because you cover this so beautifully and in, in, in in depth. So what are some of the ABCs of Schumann Resonance? Okay, so I'm glad you sent people my direction and it has been a fun study because it is, I would say, slightly underexplained, even in the public explanations of the Schumann Resonance. I recently learned that it was named after a man who was in Project Paperclip, which was moving uh, Russian and German scientists into the United States to continue on study during World War II. So it's kind of interesting that they chose this man while he wasn't the only one who was working on this sort of electromagnetic signature of the earth, which is what I think is kind of the easiest name for it, is the electromagnetic song or mm living conditions of earth it's a frequency of earth and it's between the surface so you need to have a solid surface and an ionosphere for this sound to get trapped in this container basically and so our sound on earth they say is around 7.83 hertz or rotations per second and some of the community is convinced that that particular sound is actually speeding up in frequency the baseline of earth or the song of earth is actually getting faster which in my opinion means that the earth would have to change shape so i think that that would be actually pretty extreme but what the science and what the study was was how loud is this natural earth sound getting and what's causing it to to get loud at what times and so Usually and naturally, it gets loud during the day when the sun is hitting the ionosphere. It becomes the ionosphere becomes more complex and it overall just amplifies that sound naturally. It's just always the solar wind hitting us is making this noise happen, which it's almost like the earth is a bell and it's being hit by all the solar wind all the time. So it's making this hum sound all the time. And so sometimes there's times where you know, it's nighttime (laughs) and then there's just this huge amplified like bell got hit. Bell is being hit by something that's potentially not the sunlight because it's not daylight time, it's nighttime. So those are the sort of readings I've been interested in since around 2016, 2017, following it along. And unfortunately now those anomalies are when it's not day or night and there's obviously something more happening that's hitting the bell of earth per se from the inside or from the outside is this censorship that's going on and there's multiple sources that I watch Italian and Russian which is ironic um, (laughs) with how it kind of started but these sources also will just completely stop loading data and they call it a blackout but it's mostly just in it. Sometimes they'll also do data deletions where they will allow the data to run and then they will delete it hours later. That's newer, but mostly what I've seen is whenever there's large events that could possibly cause this earth sound to get louder, I've noticed that these resources will most likely go, like they'll either go under construction or they will completely just um, stop uploading for up to 24 hours and then just begin again without any explanations, without anything. And that's usually the period that I'm already waiting to look at because of the solar weather that I had been watching that week. And so I think it's become such a phenomenon now that people are 
emotionally attached to it, which makes sense because it is a human, it is a human attachment. We are, we can't think basically without this sound. We, our brains don't function without it. They need it in the space station to recreate this particular noise of earth. And I believe that the panic level could be extreme with the readings that are truly happening. And so they're just shutting it off. And so it's still in, it's still waking people up because they're getting interested. They're clearly seeing, they're feeling something, but they can't see it and they see it's deliberately not there. So that's waking people up. But I would truly love to, I've been waiting and making this blog and building it to see the readings amp up, to see the amplitude go crazy, because I do believe it. the sun is involved. This solar cycle is making the earth get hit often. The bell is ringing louder than normal. And that was a predicted thing. The science I've been following seems to follow, but then there's also the theory we're going through a galactic cycle and going through a galactic uh, dense place where there is even more stuff hitting the earth than usual, not just the sun, but from the galactic uh, wind basically. Mm -hmm. And this sort of building on the theory has been fun, but it's really hard when they delete the data, when I'm trying to predict if this is real and <laughs> coming up. So it's been frustrating, but also helpful. And I hope that that explanation sort of gave an idea of what I do and like, the cascading events that we watch on these charts. Yeah. Well, it's it's really interesting. So what when you were talking about how you know it, it emits this this sound and the, the sound it, it's it's speeding up, could that coincide with you know so many people are saying that they feel that they're you know what used to feel like a week is now a month will go by. You know, is so is this speeding up our perception of time as well? Do you think it could be linked? It is interesting because I do believe that all these people who are feeling like the earth's vibration is going to change can't be wrong. I think there is knowledge there and either it is going to be that baseline is going to speed up the frequency, like from a 7.83 to an 8.8. I've seen it go up that high and then go back down or below average. It's an average number. So it does undulate a bit mm -hmm. The the earth's atmosphere does get compressed and expands a bit. So that shape does change of where that sound can be built. But over time, I think there's more things happening. There's more events happening within a day that is causing our nervous system to get reset more often. So we feel like we're not having, like more is happening in a day. So it feels like time's moving faster. And I think there's just more is happening in the time we're experiencing than before we're more conscious of more so um you're actually so busy experiencing all of these shifts in our nervous system because of the weather i think that we can't even focus or like calm our system or our brain waves enough to achieve what we feel like we should in a day as well so i think that's also messing with people but there is got to be something to do with time and time being dilated and shortened because during those times where the data shuts off, a lot of people also report time anomalies in their life and that they've lost five, six hours or they felt like, you know, they blinked and their day was over and those sort of things also happen. So I do believe that when the amplitude of the earth or the, the, the sound of the earth does get really loud, I think we do accelerate and we are experiencing a faster almost experience, but I, I, it's hard to explain it. I, I do believe what you're saying is true. And I'm, I have been trying to figure out if I can explain it with these charts and everything too. So mm -hmm. I have a little bit of evidence and it's been fun. I, the time thing is like the biggest conspiracy though, how control time is being controlled i think so it's cute to talk about it but i feel almost risky like oh don't want to know too much about oh, how know. you're moving the no. time well no, i mean <laughs> sometimes i feel that way <laughs> absolutely and this it, time is one of those things or I, I will have a a fleeting a fleeting moment of clarity and i've had them a couple times where i'm like <gasps> like this huge aha and I'm getting like this, this download and it makes complete sense. And, you know, it's always time is circular, it, you know, it's, it's moving like this. So 
I know enough. I do believe that. But then the minute I get it, it like, it just leaves, it just leaves my consciousness again. So I don't know if this is a, a such a 3D construct where we, where we aren't allowed to truly grasp time right. in this dimension. Um, and, you know, and another thing, I, I had no idea that they had to produce that sound on, um, in space for astronauts. I, did you know that Heidi? Mm -mm. I did not make sense. <laughs> was it kind of like that, that what was, is it like a white noise machine essentially? I mean, there is some people who claim they're marketing it for you to buy in your own home and plug in, but yes, it's, they call it the Schumann resonator or something. I'm sure it's probably their like earth resonance Mm -hmm. machine or something and it's like nasa and they just like plug it in and it's part of their environment just like they need humidity and like air <laughs> it's like that's well, a part of it doesn't it also like regulate blood pressure and regulate the your cardiology graph i don't know the word for that but it's honestly it's a great question because the heart the heart is i think the more understated part of this and i've been studying more of the brainwave impact, but the brain's waves in the heart are also extremely, they have to be coherent for you, us to work. So like, that's a great question. And I a hundred percent agree that that would be, because if it's almost like it needs that environment, our brains need this sort of so song environment to understand its own signals and to kind of get its own feedback. So it's like leaving an, an antenna out in space and it doesn't have the strength to pick up the signal from the earth anymore. So it's just like, it's getting nothing and it's hearing nothing. And it's, it's starting, all of its signals are not bouncing off of anything. And it's, it's, it starts to get chaotic really fast, I guess. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you um, an interesting uh, message that came through once from one of my galactics and it was that Okay. One of one of the the grids that the we're going to call them the dark, but, but one of the grids that they put around the Earth was actually distorting her natural like beacon sound. <laughs> that makes total sense. <laughs> and and so therefore you know the the universe let's say you know because all all planets are sentient beings they couldn't they weren't getting her clear distress signal to let everyone know she really was in need and that was one of the grid systems that they put around her was to distort that natural beacon call that she had hmm. not cool that's <laughs> not cool <laughs> i know it makes total sense and i'm just like oh <laughs> just, so that was, you know that the implications of, the, of that yeah i mean that was one of the grids that that they took down you know yeah oh 100 i i agree with that too i think what i had been getting in more of the mission was the grids caused a slowdown and a distortion of the natural frequency. And then we mutated within that. So we became, you know, uh, what's the word? Reliance on the mutated version. And then we needed to mutate back to our normal spot in, in earth's frequency and so on. And even with the sun, like we were so detached and mutated away from it. Like we can't even fully which is why they keep spraying and which is why they're still doing this. And I think that the web or the machinery they're using is constantly like slowly bringing us back, I hope to where we're supposed to be. That's the, that's the internal feeling I have mm -hmm. is, and that's why I've been watching it is more so just aiding, aiding this somewhat painful process of us remutating towards a more natural frequency again. And obviously working with like song bowls and music and solfagio frequencies and those structurally sound frequencies helps repair all of the damage that we've kind of mutated to survive in, which is incredible, but like mm -hmm. it's caused us to kill and burn so much more energy and like give us cancer and everything. Cause we can't, our DNA can't express properly and our environment keeps getting changed. And yeah. it truly, it's fascinating to me how, actually we have survived so much, I think manipulation and how beautiful like we are, isn't it? Like what, what we're capable of is so, it has shown me that more so. And mm -hmm. it's also scared me. My research has scared me because it's like, this has been happening a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. This information, long time, like beyond even this civilization, 
and so on and those grids around those planets like to like I don't think we were the first one that that happened to either and it's just insane to me that this is like a pattern that creation's like yeah let's just like let's just do this to ourselves and see how it goes <laughs> well, is that it's well I'm just saying it, it showing how genetically adaptable our species yeah, is I think so shows why we're we are looked at as being so valuable yeah. to so many other beings because mm -hmm. our this this can adapt to everything mm -hmm. they throw at us mm -hmm. we have to it but it brings you know we're, we're bringing back a very important point because so many people like okay i've heard you in resonance but like how does it really affect me mm -hmm. But it, it affects, I mean, these physical ailments that people are having when we're seeing this, you know, spike. So when you see the grids, when they say like a whiteout, what right. kind of things can we be feeling in our bodies during a whiteout? Uh, during the whiteouts is when we see, at least in the Russian charts, zero to 40 hertz or like 0.3 hertz to 40 hertz being amplified past their normal level, basically, which I think on those charts can be actually not that high and i i do and have gotten pushback from older gentlemen who are scientists even some people who lived in sedona saying that the frequencies that we're measuring and watching aren't strong enough or important enough basically to cause these types of symptoms and i've just had to watch these people tell me this and just be like are you not seeing the evidence i'm providing you like i have already proven that what you're saying is not true but they don't want to hear it they don't want to hear that yes, I have correlating data of people's symptoms during the days that the amplitude is going even up just a little, just a tiny bit, people will feel that. And that's good too. But it's funny, we are extremely adaptable, but we're also extremely sensitive. And I think that's why I've been so into frogs lately, because it is such a symbol of the bio sensitivity. And that's sort of like, you know, an environment is safe because of how much, how their frogs are doing, basically. And that's like an old thing of biodiversity and so being the sensitive one is good and that's my skill and so I can feel these shifts and I can report it and also find evidence more often but I'm not even the most sensitive person and these sort of sensitivities have been intense for some people people who have nervous system issues so I've had to learn how to repair people's nervous systems like eating mushrooms so many mushrooms offer the supplies to rebuild your nervous system. Like I'm should be eating some after how my neck is hurting. And I think I'm going to have my reishi, cordycep, lion's mane, mushroom, whatever it is, supplement that I have. And um, it's yeah. like keeping up with these blasts is so difficult because they've been deleting them lately. And so I can't even educate during them. But what's happening mostly is I think your brain waves, all of them are being stimulated to a higher level. And since we live in this container and it's so much bigger than us, when the container gets loud, it can over, it can over supersede our own, our own, I don't know, central nervous system. Basically it, it's an outdoor outside perception, just like a really loud noise you could hear. It's a loud noise you can't hear. And you're feeling it. And it's also in tune with our brain waves. We have our waking state, our, our relaxed meditative state, our working state, our highly stressed state, and then our like transcendental state all falls within the Schumann resonances as well. So they will pluck certain frequencies I've noticed specifically. And those exact brainwave states are reflecting back in people when they write me their symptoms. So that's been fun, but also... <laughs> If you can imagine your brain just getting super stimulated out of nowhere on a random day, most people end up going grocery shopping and doing all of their chores because most people are living in a depressed brainwave state right now. A lot of people are depressed, including myself. I find I'm often more depressed than I am more excited and out there. But during these blast days, I almost know before they happen, like I wake up and I'm like, let's talk to people like, wow, I'm going to go to four different places in town and do all this work I've been putting off. And then at the end of the day, there's a huge white out on the charts. And I'm like, fantastic. But I don't, <laughs> um, I'm too tired to post about it usually by then too, because I work, I use that momentum when I can. So that's what I recommend to people is, you know, make this work for you, figure out what 
what these feedbacks mean for your own system because everybody's body I've noticed does respond a little bit different. I'm assuming we should respond mostly the same, but I've also learned there's a lot of genetics on this earth and some of it's not even from here. So to have it respond differently from the host planet also makes sense to me. Well, there's people struggling to be in the host planet frequency if their DNA is not from here and, you know, goes in that direction too. So wow. yeah, whiteouts is just like a lottery basically, but you know, things are happening. <laughs> You know, it's so funny that you bring up the home planet frequency. I, I, because I've had a couple sessions and the Arcturians will come through and it's, it's when they've come through to help me, they always make me first line them up with their home planet frequency first. So I literally will get in the crown in their crown and we will just with frequency literally scan until it's like, whoop, they're lined up. And then we hold that frequency and then we get in and do the healing. I, I just find that so interesting that, that you that brought makes that. total sense. It, yeah. That's so cool. makes, I, I, I go with it, you know, it, it feels right and it makes sense. But for me to, to sit, explain the science to you, I can't do, I can't do that <laughs> other than that just makes sense. But, you know, outside of that, <laughs> I've noticed, I was just talking to my kids in the car today. My daughter was fiddling with the radio and I told her, I said, I don't know what's going on, but I can't handle listening to music right now because it's such an overstimulation. Like, and I was telling my son yesterday, I said, I have so much thought, but it's not, it's just like chaotic thought mm -hmm. going on inside that I can't like focus. And I told my daughter, I, you know, cause I like listening to music when I drive my car. And sometimes I just kind of like zone out to it. I can't even handle that right now because there's, it's just an overstimulation and, you know, we're getting smoked with the, the Schumann resonance, you know, the galactic waves that are absolutely coming through and hitting us. And we're also getting smoked with these EMF waves that they're pulsating at us. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not surprised with, you know, trying to balance nervous system that hello, getting inundated with new gadgets and LED lights and da, 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 anything to keep everybody just going. Zzz, zzz, it's kind of crazy. I'm also super not surprised about the grid work people are drawn or felt called to do and why everyone is strategically placed everywhere. It makes it exciting, but you know, watching people self combust or, <laughs> or kind of get out of body with the, with the, with their antsiness. It's, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. You're like, just turn off your stuff. Yeah. So, you know, so what's your best advice for, you know, the, the viewers at home, you know, the audience listening to this, when we're starting to see those spikes, what's your best advice for them while we're in those moments? That's a good question. It's, I would say, look at it with a bit of cheekiness and excitement instead of uh, nervousness, because when these shifts are coming, they have a global impact and they're globally affecting everybody unless you're having underground in a cage, which I'm sure is happening, but there, these shifts are also a sign in consciousness being stimulated because of just brainwave stimulation as well. So people who don't have thoughts in the buddhic sort of i am one i'm experiencing cosmic downloads people like who've never experienced those brainwave gamma brainwave experiences through these blasts can just through the environment all of a sudden have those moments and then go back to where they're normal places but people like ourselves who are training ourselves to be sensitive to the environment so we can be good actors and protectors of our children and our communities and our homes and our country and our planet and our grid point and all of whatever, you know, your DNA. And these activations can also cause us to be overstimulated in a lot of pain and um, people follow so they can know, okay, I can't work those days. Pretty sure I'm going to give myself a light workload on those days or make sure I don't book my clients on these days. And people tend to, if they've noticed like, okay, these 
these blasts do affect me to a point where I can't work and it's causing me, well, those people have to become self-employed. And I've noticed that is just what's happening. And some of these people have never had that help. They don't know it's space weather, but they've already had to remove themselves from the cities and remove themselves from technology, remove themselves from living next to the military base, remove themselves from living next to the ocean and all of these huge grids and whatever that they unconsciously are being hurt by. Something finally is, their, their DNA is kicking on and walking them away from the danger. Some people, and some people really sit in it and they really suffer on purpose because they really just want to be living in this city and like really just want to be you know watching that tv all day long and it's like there's nothing i can do to help you with that level of radiation like there's no pill you can take well there actually probably is a pill you can take but they don't sell them to us but i think you can take a pill and you can deal with radiation better but that's not the point it's really is get back to nature, get back to the trees and the earth because they have no problem. They have no problem with the frequencies of earth and they are holding space while a lot of humans are ignoring and hiding from their own truth and from their own natural earth life. But the trees, they're, they're just holding it down for everybody else in a funny way. It's, it would be nice if we joined the trees in our conscious, you know, receiving and giving of intention and of earthly sort of vibes. And I think that's what we're going towards is becoming more identified with being an earthling and feeling when these shifts happen and knowing they're natural and how to handle them. So like, oh, you're gonna take a bath today because geomagnetic storming, let's just let your, your nervous system relax and get more minerals because you're burning a lot of, burning a lot to just receive these signals you're burning a lot of resources so you have to keep feeding your body the resources it needs to like keep working and processing and interpreting all of these frequencies the best way and how and then if you don't want to be with them at all you can go back more and just sit in the mud and just ignore it all like you don't have to listen but you can let it soothe you and get back to it and that would be my advice is just soothe yourself as much as possible. Don't fight it. Don't fight it because it's not going to work. And the, I think it is a hint. It is a spiritual push. It's a energy push. It's you could call it magic, but you don't have to call it magic anymore. It's electromagnetic <laughs> things going on. It's invisible, but extremely physical that you can feel it. And it's, it's causing way more issues than it needs to and again i'm really grateful i share about it all the time because i think i've helped so many people get off of medication because they don't they didn't know why they were in pain random times of the week but now watching space weather they know they're gonna have pain that day so they don't have to medicate the rest of the week they just deal with the one day and they can be more on top of it instead of just surrendering to the pain and just numbing yourself from everything which is sort of what the pharmaceutical had to in the direction they went in it seems <laughs> but that's coming out of that now we are revolutionizing medicine we're watching it happen on a global level so i'm grateful and frequency medicine has been a part of the conversation but it it needs to come in more i think and it's a good it's a good way to get it talked about I love that. Thank you so much for helping to explain Shum Resonance. For all of our listeners at home, what's the best way that they can continue to follow you? Oh, for sure. Please come to ascensiondiaries.com and add your email to my email list. Then you will get everything I'm doing all the time. And then you can go to my Instagram because that's my favorite Instagram or YouTube. And that's where I, I sit with the people the most, do q and A talk about myself. It's a diary about myself personally. And then I've allowed it to be public. So, and I have my predictions and so on, and I help people through my knowledge, but it is, it's me tracking myself as I'm in pain and suffering and also exalted through specific and all the different space weather events and trying to learn the patterns of my own body. And in doing so, I've been able to help so many people, I'm sure do it for themselves, but I encourage everyone, please do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and use me as a resource and as your buddy 
and I'd be happy to be there. And um, yeah, I help me also. If you think you know better than I do about some of this stuff, I'm always open to learn more because people ask me. So I want to be most informed I can be as well. I think that's a responsible thing to do. <laughs> yeah, we're always we're always learning and we're always growing. So yeah, it's fun. That's why it's a diary. So it's like it's I don't actually know, but I'll just keep writing about it forever and maybe I'll figure it out. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming into the classroom and everybody at home. Alexis is going to join us again next week for another fascinating learning lesson in the classroom. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye.